you very much, Honorable Minister Dato Sri Mohammad Nazri bin Tan Sri Abdul Aziz. Thank you for joining us at the ICD today for the Berlin Economic Congress conference. And thank you very much for your keynote speech as well. Thank you. Uh, we would like to ask you a few questions and your thoughts about some issues. Uh, all four of us are MA students. So uh, Matt will, um, is from Copenhagen, Betsy and I are from the United States, and Cohen is from the Netherlands. Yeah. Mr. Minister, please, um, how has uh, cultural diplomacy actively been used in Malaysia so far? Oh. You know, uh, in Malaysia we are a multi-cultural country. Yes. And uh, I must say that uh, in Malaysia, we have effectively used uh, cultural diplomacy uh, to promote uh, understanding between the various ethnic groups in Malaysia. And how we do it is that, uh, you know, as I've said in my speech earlier, we have many celebrations. Uh, we have Diwali for the Indians, uh, Hindus, uh, we have the Chinese New Year, we have Christmas for Christians, and these are all uh, you know, time of uh, happiness. And uh, what the government has done is that we have a national celebration for all these uh, religious and community uh, celebration, uh, whereby the government organized a big celebration and we invite all group. For example, if it's Christmas, it's not only meant for the Christian. It's meant for all Malaysia regardless of their uh, religion, we come together, we celebrate uh, Christmas, so that uh, there, uh, there will be understanding between uh, Malaysian citizens of diverse uh, religious groups to understand each other. And we have been doing this uh, for the last uh, 20 years, and it has shown uh, a great improvement in uh, uh, peaceful coexistence between uh, Malaysians of diverse uh, religious groups. So we actually use uh, uh, cultural diplomacy to bring together uh, Malaysians of diverse ethnic groups to come together as one Malaysian. Fantastic. And, and to you in person, what, uh, how, uh, what do you think of, of, of cultural diplomacy? Oh, well, me, you hear this, uh, <laughs> yes. it means a lot to me. Yes. Uh, it means a lot because, as I said earlier, my country is the, the background is that we are multi-cultural, uh, multi-racial, uh, and multi-religious. So cultural diplomacy is very important to me because you know when you talk about culture, sometimes you find similarities uh, amongst uh, the culture practice uh, by our people. And when you talk about culture, it's all about good things. You know, you you have you have music you have a cuisine. So these are not, culture is not divisive. Culture is actually bringing uh, people together. Uh, I will go to uh, a friend of mine who is uh, Malaysian of Chinese origin, and I go to his house, and culture is about, you know, the music of the Chinese community. I'll sit down and listen. There's nothing to argue, you know, it soothes your, your, your mind. And then he serves me food, the Chinese food, the Chinese cuisine. I eat the food, so it's all about, you know, cultural diplomacy means, you know, you, you don't have to talk about things which, which are divisive or sensitive, so that's why to me, uh, cultural diplomacy is very important intra-Malaysia, intra but of course when, uh, when you go to, to, to the world, uh, between uh, nations, I think uh, cultural diplomacy has a very important role to bring together uh, two countries which are apart, to bring them to understanding, and uh, cultural dip diplomacy works better than other kind of diplomacy. So cultural diplomacy is very important uh, to me. Thank you. Um, as you know, this conference is about global trends and creative economies. Does sustainable tourism have a place in your country's economy, and in which way? Certainly. Uh, in my speech earlier, I mentioned that um, uh, culture, culture and tourism, uh, first of all, my Prime Minister has combined uh, tourism and uh, culture, which I think is uh, natural and logical 
because if you go to any countries, uh, you know, uh, certainly when you go there, you want to look at their culture. And uh, creative economy is part of the culture. Uh, it helps uh, to bring income uh, to the various uh, uh, people, various groups, uh, with their uh, culture. They, they have, um, you know, for example, like uh, you have uh, a play, for example, uh, which uh, shows about the culture of a certain group of people in the country. Now, uh, that is uh, showing to others. Uh, and, and, and they make money. I mean, I mean, creative economy means that you have uh, fine art, you have, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, craft and all that, yeah? So, uh, creative economy is very important because it helps to bring uh, income to the uh, lower income people who are, you know, who are good at uh, craftsmanship and, uh, and, and also how we encourage creative economy in my country is that we have a, a body which is called the uh, Malaysian National Craft uh, Body. Uh, the function of which is to encourage uh, uh, people with creative economy and uh, we buy their products uh, for, for us then to sell to others. You know, we, we are more or less like the middlemen. So, you know, whatever you do, uh, we support you. And there are, uh, we also have the, um, um, what we call the Istana Budaya. Uh, this is an, uh, this is our national theatre. And uh, we encourage uh, our young, uh, you know, people to have uh, plays, uh, uh, you know, uh, theatre plays and all that. Uh, we give grants. Uh, we have schools for, uh, you know, acting. So uh, these are uh, the things that the government do to uh, encourage uh, creative economy in Malaysia. Okay. Um, can you maybe give us some specific example about green growth in, mm. uh, in your country and also maybe especially related to the tourism sector? Mm. I, I, I mentioned in my speech earlier, if you still remember, that we have a program what we call the homestay program. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole idea is uh, to um, encourage uh, people to come and see for themselves how we Malaysians uh, live uh, daily. And uh, Malaysia is 67% uh, still uh, covered by trees. 67 is a, is a big uh, percentage of the uh, land in Malaysia. But uh, even though we are 67%, we feel that we need to, uh, for every tree that we cut, uh, we need to replant. So in the homestay uh, program, uh, we uh, get the visitors uh, to come with the local community. And before they leave, they, they help to, you know, they plant one tree. Uh, so this way, we, we are actually encouraging uh, tourists to come not just to come as tourists, but also to help our country to, uh, to plant more trees. Yeah? And by doing so, I think you know, most tourists are just too happy to do it. But uh, other than that, as I've said earlier, it is enticing people to come back in a few years to see how the trees have grown. So this is one of the programs that we do. Uh, the other thing uh, that uh, we do is that we have the uh, what we call the timber concession uh, uh, tourism sector. Uh, you know, uh, in Europe, uh, Europeans are very concerned about um, forest uh, protection, uh, conservation, and preservation. In fact, uh, no timber will be exported to EU if it's not uh, sustainable, uh, uh, cutting it sustainably. So what we have is that in Sarawak, the biggest state in uh, Malaysia where we give out a lot of timber concession, we ask the companies, uh, you know, uh, not only to cut trees, but uh, they must also do a replanting program. And uh, we also invite tourists to come to their concession, timber concession, to see what the timber concession company does. 
So this way, then tourists will not just come as tourists, but to see for themselves, you know, that uh, timber concession in Malaysia is sustainable. So that will encourage uh, Europeans to be more confident uh, when you buy uh, timber from Malaysia, you know that it comes from a sustainable timber concession. So uh, these are the things that we do when it comes to green growth. It is very important. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, we have the oldest rainforest in the world, which is called the Royal Bolo, which you all must visit. It is the oldest rainforest in the world, much older than uh, uh, Congo and Amazon. And rainforests contribute 30% of the world's oxygen. So by coming to Malaysia and see all this, you're helping us to help yourself. Because uh, there are not many forests now in Europe. You have to depend on us to get your oxygen. Yes. So that's why you must come to Malaysia. And you know that when you come to Malaysia as tourists, you are not just coming as tourists, but you are really uh, supporting Malaysia's effort, Malaysia's effort to ensure that our rainforests are conserved for the good of the world. Okay? Yes, I'd love to visit it. Yeah. Ah, you must come. You must come. Okay. It happens to be in my state. The Royal Bloom Forest, uh, the biggest rainforest in the world. And oldest. And oldest. Okay. Um, from your keynote speech earlier, you mentioned that Malaysia is working for uh, the visa regulations um, to make it easier for tourism to yeah. visit Malaysia. Uh, now on more uh, personal and a little bit more sensitive issues, I have heard that if you were to visit Malaysia with a passport that has an Israeli stamp, it might hinder entry into Malaysia. So it's only for uh, tourism. Is that something that is looked or frowned upon still or is now no uh, we, we we don't allow a person with uh, Israeli passport okay. to come to Malaysia mm -hmm. but if in your passport it shows that you have visited Israel it's not a problem for okay. us okay what we ban is a passport okay. not uh, not the you know the uh, not the countries not visiting Israel Okay. It's only the passport, okay. Israeli passport. Now, this is a policy because um, uh, we are a strong supporter of the uh, uh, formation of uh, a Palestinian state, mm -hmm. which has been, uh, you know, uh, declined to the Palestinians, uh, who have every right to have their own state. And uh, because of Israeli's uh, policy towards them, not allowing them to have their own uh, nation, which every citizen in the world is entitled to. Every one of us in uh, uh, any part of the world, we belong to a country. Uh, you know, we have a country. Uh, it is not right uh, to, to stop uh, a nation uh, from forming their own country, just basically because uh, you are having problem with them. I mean, what's, the, what's, what's so objectionable uh, in uh, giving the Palestinians a country of their own? So we stand by it. If you talk about uh, human rights, if you talk about uh, the right to a nation, then I think that you know, uh, we must support the formation of a country uh, for the Palestinians. And because the uh, Israelis are depriving them in their policies, so we are totally uh, opposed to the policy of Israel. Uh, we think that you know they, they they have a stand which is, in our opinion, very uh, racist in their attitude. So that's why uh, you know we are not racist in Malaysia, mm -hmm. and uh, we object uh, Israelis' uh, 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 deprivation of nationhood to Palestinian, and as such we say uh, you are not welcome to our country. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. Simple. So it's that. clarified, right? Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, question? I think, I think we're fine with the time, so thank yeah. you for your time. Thank you so much. I, I, I enjoy this uh, interview. Yes. Yeah. And I think, uh, uh, you know, cultural diplomacy is the uh, instrument and tool to bring all nations together. Mm -hmm. So thank you very thank much you. on behalf of ICD. I really thank you for coming to visit us and giving such a wonderful speech thank and you. also the time for this interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.